Live from the home of Al Capone, Michael Jordan, and Deep Dish Pizza. Pizza. Giving it to you straight from the horse's mouth. Unfiltered and restoring hope to the podcast universe. Gary Franchi. Hey, what's up? Gary Franchi here on the GCast with my beautiful bride, Welcome Angie. Welcome back, everybody. It is Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for the GCast. We're going to get into some pretty heavy topics today. We are. We are. We're going to just skip all the crazy news. That's I how mean, important this is right now. Yeah, we're going to skip the fact that Madigan's office got raided this morning. <laughs> uh, we're going to get more information about that later, but we have a topic that is that needs to be covered. It is um, It's a heavy topic. Angie it's a heavy topic it's gonna to be hard to get through this right now I feel like I'm getting a <laughs> teary-eyed already but I'm very excited that we're here right now this means a lot to me it's timely too especially with the Epstein and Maxwell mm -hmm. uh, situation that's unfolding in the federal court system right now. Uh, but our guest today uh, is Craig the Sawman Sawyer and we're gonna talk about child sex trafficking today uh, something that is often overlooked People don't talk about it. People don't want to talk about it because it's such a difficult topic to right. face. But but the, it's happening. It's happening here. It's happening a lot. And the person we're going to be speaking to, he's got a, a documentary film out right now, and it is called Contra Land. Now uh, we watched it last night, you know, before putting the kids to bed, and I could not believe what we were witnessing. Angie, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't stop watching it. In fact, I, I rewatched most of it this morning. Um, this is a must see. I was texting my entire family and mm -hmm. close personal friends, you know, to watch this, to watch this film. I was doing that too. While we were watching it last night, I was shooting the link off to people. I'm like, watch this, watch this, watch this. You know, this is, we got to do this for the kids. Please. You don't yeah. even realize it. You don't even know what's happening. But these guys uh, with, with Craig... And his team, the Viper team, mm -hmm. going out there setting up these sting operations. I felt so empowered watching them. Yeah. I felt like there was a direction that we could go towards mm -hmm. to save these kids. And I'm so I'm so grateful that he's out there. I was waiting for that because a lot of times, even like, okay, I'm in the news and it's like, I'm all, all I'm doing is presenting these problems that are happening. It's problem after problem after problem. So I was mm -hmm. waiting for like this solution. And I was so happy to see... Spoiler alert, <laughs> the, the end of the film, all these groups come together to solve probably one of the greatest global cancers that ever hit this planet and, and humanity. And that's the, uh, that's um, child sex trafficking. Yes. Um, what, are, what are some of your thoughts about what we witnessed in the film, Ange? I mean, just the... Uh the realization of how common it is and and the numbers and the statistics of of pedophiles and what they're how they start off and like who they are i mean these are the people they're not the ones who you think are just the creepy guy in the corner or right. hiding out right. it's the everyday individual that you would have no idea is committing these these horrific well, crimes and one point that they brought up in the film was the elite, the elite pedophiles, yes. the ones who are the, the the leaders in your churches, the leaders in your uh, courthouses, the people who are in the government, people who are you know protecting and serving this nation, like the ones we have trust and faith in, are some of the ones that are the most dangerous. And they brought it up, and because I was as we were watching, I'm like, okay. We got these creepy low level scumbags who are going in to to be with these children and I'm waiting for the point like, okay, let's, let's get, let's stop with the low hanging fruit. Let's go after the big dogs. And they started to, yes. and they showed it. And I'm like, awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, this is great. And I want to talk to Craig about, I got some questions for him um, regarding the elite because it's happening, Yeah, you know, and it's, it's the big topic right now. Uh, Craig, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you guys. It's a pleasure to come on. It really is. Uh, Thank you so a, much for being with us. It's an honor to have you here. Um, mm -hmm. Angie, do you want to start off? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> as I was saying earlier in the, the beginning of the show, I just feel so 
this is a dark subject and this is a scary subject and we don't know as individuals where to begin but watching you throughout this film it empowered me um it set a fire underneath me that i just i'm so grateful that you're out there doing this work and you don't leave it as you know there's nothing that we can do there is a lot we can do to fight back i want to make sure we get your twitter handle correct it's vets for children on twitter so if we could fix it on the screen there that'd be great uh there's an end uh, that's for child res i think is is what the twitter handle it kind of had to be butchered because there are other people out there that okay uh, oh so that is the actual it's child res yeah yeah okay i want to make sure I, I thought it was a typo uh but you're you're a marine vet a former navy seal a sniper combat instructor mm -hmm. you served with seal team one and seal team six so you started the um, the Veterans for Child Rescue. It's a nonprofit to help raise awareness for domestic minor sex trafficking, and you created a non permissive environment for children exploitation in the United States. Uh, so your documentary film it's a feature length film highlighting the challenges of non government organizations, law enforcement, in the fight to end the exploitation of children. So let's, we want to talk to you about the movie. We were able to watch it last night, absolutely floored. Uh, and then of course that took us to a deep dive in your organization, other videos you've put out. Uh, we were catching up with some of your latest on Facebook last night as well. So we've got a lot to talk about. First, give us some background. What led you up to making this movie? What caused you to form Veterans for Child Rescue? And uh, describe your mission. Yeah, well, I, I was raised by Christian parents in Southern. I, I grew up with a South, Southern Texas boy lifestyle and went off to the Marine Corps and SEAL teams and did five years of federal law enforcement, another 10 years in high threat mobile security over in the war zones. And when I started seeing about six years ago, I would say a friend of mine from the intelligence community let me know that the area that we grew up just north of Houston, Texas, was the hottest epicenter of child sex trafficking in the United States. And I found that very upsetting because it's so counter to our culture there. You know, if I felt like if there was to be a downtown USA, it was going to be right in my front yard because dang it, that's that was America, you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's how I, we love our country there, and and um, and the good, decent people there. We we take care of children, and so I just couldn't understand how that could be the epicenter of of something so evil and so invasive, so, such an affront to everything that we believe in there. And I started assessing why it was so big, why it was so pervasive and so prevalent, mm -hmm. and I realized it's because that predators have a lot of top cover. It's being kept secret. And coming from the covert realm of counterterrorism and working in the intelligence community, I realized, man, they're benefiting wildly, the, the predators, from this top cover and this veil of secrecy that is afforded to them by the mainstream news media, big Hollywood, and Washington, D.C. And so I realized the, the biggest solution I could provide would be to take away their benefit of all of that top cover to expose them mm. uh, to what they cannot withstand being exposed to is what they're doing hunting our children right under our noses no longer did i feel compelled to go halfway around the world to defend my country my people from a threat that may one day come here when the predators have been actively hunting our children here for years under a veil of secrecy and so i i decided to film a documentary as the biggest most powerful alert mechanism that i could identify and it had to be a quality piece and so i needed to to get a major studio behind it or a major network and none of them would big hollywood was not going to touch this with a 10-foot pole mm -hmm. i learned over several years all my biggest contacts just gave me uh, oh yeah yeah shined me on yeah sure we'll cover that that'll be great and they just never did and so i eventually I started crowdfunding to rally the money to make the documentary just to alert the people. I was just adamant that the American people had to know. That was my only thought. I'm like, would they have to know? They have to know. They have to know. There's no time. And so nobody would help. And so I started crowdfunding. And then all the big tech crowdfunding platforms began doing some really weird and creepy, illegal things to stop me. And I was a little naive at first. I'm like, why are they doing that? I don't understand. And then people started saying, look who runs this company. Look at the Islamic influence. Look at the radical leftist Marxist political 
outlook of the people that own and run that platform, Craig. You exposing child threat, child trafficking is a threat to them. They don't want you to expose it, and they are silencing you. I'm like, man, this is this is disappointing. So, I eventually ended up having to resort mm -hmm. to founding an official 501c3 nonprofit organization with a mountain of bureaucratic bureaucratic paperwork necessary to satisfy the IRS daily on a nationally registered 501c3 nonprofit org. So we began fighting through all that battle. We founded it. We, we, we spent three years filming the documentary. We were attacked and undermined and I was called everything under the book. I was called everything but an American patriot <laughs> by a lot of the crazy people and haters online uh, for, for filming this. And especially when we started making legitimate arrests and, and convictions on child predators, then a uh, lady uh, in, in Australia that claims to be a victim began calling me evil, and, and she started having pop-up um, copycats that were in the United States, demonizing me and my organization. And oh, man, what, what's this? Where's this coming from? And there's a there's a really dark agenda behind what they do, and it's mm. the same kind of people that are attacking our president right now for trying to drain the swamp in DC, but we plowed through, we got Contra Land. Ultimately, we got it on the air. There are two networks that are gonna pick it up. One of them is airing it later this month on the 25th to 90 million households. In oh, the that's great. And another one with uh, 400, and I think 440 million households worldwide that they, they're gonna broadcast it to. So 550 million households will receive Contra Land and what I mean for it to do is change the culture to a protective one of children rather than the one that is so secretly permissive of predators against children and child trafficking. So that's what I'm fighting for, guys. That's what Veterans for Child Rescue is all about. That's what Contra Land was filmed and given to the American populace in good faith to bring is a, is a hostile environment against child abuse and against child trafficking and a protective environment once again of the children as it should always have been and it must always remain so i fight every day for the for the defenseless to defend the defenseless and i just urge people to help us man to, to stand up with us and it's growing and i'm grateful for it i'm grateful you know last night uh, after i watched your film i hit twitter and i was looking at tweets and um porn star jenna jameson popped up into my feed and she is a conservative, believe it or not. And she put out a tweet just a few hours ago. She said, the reason why Hollywood has been so incredibly silent on child sex trafficking is not only do they partake, they are covering for the big league hitters, the ones that hide in the shadows under the cover of a crown. I mean, that's that's coming from, you know, Jenna Jameson, of all people. And yeah, I was pretty shocked that she went she went to that level and she's talking about the crown i can only think of you know prince andrew and and jeffrey right. epstein and, and what's going on with that situation um well that just shows all another layer of all this and your persistency to get this film out there you uncovered a lot more darkness than 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 maybe you had anticipated did you even realize that you would i mean you're already dealing with a really dark dark issue here and then to uncover the the layers of this must have been and then it goes to such high levels mm -hmm. within government royalty uh i mean you you're you're up against some serious forces here yeah well the the investigators that told me about the nature of the darkest cases that they were investigating uh, and there are many layers to what happens to the children and different types of abuse some of it is financial 38 to $50 billion a year criminal enterprise inside the United States. That's huge, folks. That's bigger than most major corporations that really celebrate as being richy rich. So there's a lot of money. And so there's one motivator. There's a lot of sexual perversion. It's another motivator. So there's another layer of the onion. And then there's just these sadistic people who get off on abusing children and the power trip. Then there's the political layer of blackmail. We call it brownstoning operations in the intelligence community where public figures are filmed committing crimes, having sex with underage kids, and and that is then used to blackmail them. So uh, you and I, the American citizen, when we vote, 
we're not getting what we're voting for because our elected officials, so many of them are compromised with these brownstoning operations at the mansions and the parties and the islands where they've been filmed doing God only knows what because they have no integrity and they're not good people. And, you know, shame on the people that say that integrity and character do not matter in a public official. Yes, they do matter because that's the only thing that causes them to act in good faith when nobody's looking. And we've seen in decades past that they can pretty much get around the, the letter of the law anytime they want. So it's only down to what they're actually made of and what they their core values and beliefs that have caused them to, to act in good faith for we the people. So we do need to get back to putting people with strong ethical moral character into office so that they'll actually do what they say and that they won't be so easily bribable and, and blackmailable with these these things. So there's all these layers to it. And then at the very core, the at the worst of it is a front line between good and evil, a clash between good and evil. And it's, uh, I was told that Craig, this is not something you're necessarily going to ever solve with just a badge and a gun. This is a spiritual clash between good and evil. And we, we have to just face it and realize that there is a force of good and there is a force of evil and it has to be addressed in that way. It's not normal or natural to torture children to death, folks. That's mm. not how we're wired. It's not supposed to happen. And we have to, however this is being motivated, we have to be honest and face it and, and denounce it. We can't yes. any longer be bullied into tolerating every single thing under the sun. There are things that we should be intolerant of. We should be intolerant of things that are harmful and destructive. Should we not? I mean, we should absolutely, absolutely. say, no, we shouldn't be tolerant of cancer or the AIDS virus or child torture or child rape. We should not be tolerant of those things. I'm sorry, but um, there's a line that must not be crossed. And I say, hands off the kids, man. We interview children in, in their adulthood, later in their adulthood now, who can articulate to you exactly the level of emotional and psychological trauma that they suffered and how it shattered their little minds, a uh, full grown man raping them as a child. So many of these predators want to justify it as just another sexual preference and normalize it. Well, me too, you know, there's 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 gay and there's every other letter of sexual perversion now and, and the, the child predators want to say us too we're just another sexual preference and and folks i'm telling you scientifically and morally it cannot be added to the list it cannot because the human brain is not fully developed the outer outer cortex and frontal lobe are not fully developed until the ages of 23 to 25 scientists are learning now so a child cannot advocate for themselves against a full-grown predatory adult no matter how the predatory adult wants to describe it or try to justify it, it's never going to be okay. It's always going to be damaging. The child can never quite understand what's happening or why or articulate a an intelligent uh, defense against why they don't want to go along with this. And it is damaging, and we have to draw the line around the children. We have to be intelligent enough and morally courageous enough to step in front of the children and say, that's a, that's a bridge too far. Uh, this, this, this road, don't go that far. That's you know right. And Craig, that's what, you're, that's what you're doing. Uh, you're setting up these operations. You're going in there. You're, you're getting these guys. And I want to talk to you. We're going to go to a break in about a minute here. But when we come back, I do want to talk to you about some of those sting operations. We're going to play the trailer for your film. It's about a two-minute trailer. Uh, your daughter's role in the film, yes. which was really cool to watch like how you as a father yes you know you know had the apprehension but then you recognize her strength her strength and her power and i'm like yes this is like the greatest family operation that you could ever you know in, envision sadly though it had a um the, the beginning of that story is very traumatic but you guys figured out a way to turn it around for the better uh we also want to talk about some the, the locations where you have uh, filmed these operations. We want to talk about Epstein and we want to talk about Maxwell uh, and some of the media cover up that we've seen of uh, Project Veritas uh, blowing the whistle on some of these media people uh, who had the information on Epstein years ago, but they, they sat on it. So there's so much we can talk about. Um, we're just getting started, folks. We're talking with 
Craig the Sawman Sawyer. He is with Vets for Child Rescue, and he has a new film out called Contra Land. And we're going to show you the trailer when we get back. The G Cast will be right back after this short break from our sponsors. Welcome back to the Gcast. I'm Gary Franchi with my beautiful bride Angie. Welcome back, everybody. If you're concerned about your financial situation, if you got money in the markets, money in the in uh, retirement funds, and you're watching the markets and you're getting kind of skittish, give my friends at Noble Gold a call eight seven seven six four six five three four seven. They will help you do something very special. They will help you convert your IRA into gold or a portion of it into gold so that you don't have to worry about market fluctuations. Gold has been a store of value for eons and you can use it in your IRA. They'll even send it to your house. You can actually take possession of the gold. Did you know that Angie? I did. Yeah. So you can take the money, you can take your money out of your IRA, you can put it into gold and you can actually hold it in, hold it in your own safe or they'll hold it in their safe, whatever you want to do. They'll help you do that Good so you can get through some of these trying times with market uncertainty. So the number 877-646-5347, my friends at Noble Gold, will walk you through the process with no pressure. Now we're talking to Craig the Sawman Sawyer, new movie out, website is ContraLandMovie.com. We're going to show you the trailer for this film. Brian, if you could cue that up for us, we're going to get this started so we can all watch it. And uh, if you want to put it up in a single box so everyone can see it, and then we will, uh, well, let's just play it. Let's do let's it. Watch it. There are about 75 cartel organizations that are controlling and trafficking women and children. Now, this is slavery. These children come from our families. It's evil. I don't ever feel like I'm going to be the same. I feel marked. How much is two girls for a half hour? I really wanted my mom to love me. 
and I also didn't want her to be sick. I'll do it for 150. It's so common that no matter what town you're in, you could probably go within a couple blocks and find a victim or a perpetrator of child trafficking. Hi, Hi how are you? Very nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, the sexual exploitation of children has increased exponentially. It begins with, uh, with a glance, with a kind word, with a conversation, and, and pretty soon you've developed this relationship. No family deserves to have this happen in their life. It, it, you're never the same, never. Real men do not prey upon defenseless and precious children. Knock it off or we're coming for you. You must not be tolerant of that which will kill us or that which will destroy our children. We can't be a network of people that says no more by ourselves. The stories are something that the general public will never even imagine could happen. As long as there is supply, demand, it will never end. got the chills man i am just i have the chills watching that one of the most powerful eye-opening films long overdue craig yeah. um my hat's off to you and your team for what you're doing out there absolutely i mean with the the work that you guys are doing and being able to create this film i don't know where you found the time <laughs> tell us about your daughter aspen and because obviously people will see the film and they'll, they'll see the full story but tell us what happened there and uh, your daughter's role in the film. Well, we had committed to combating this evil. And when when I say it's, it's a spiritual problem, uh, this guy was seemingly unrelated, unconnected to, to anybody that we can determine. But as soon as I'd thrown my hat in the ring and our family had committed to fighting this fight and exposing child trafficking, our daughter was abducted at knife point and repeatedly raped uh, again and again uh, throughout the night by a lo local serial rapist and it just a, seemed to be a fluke thing she came out of a subway restaurant and he went up and put his arm around her and put a knife right to her side on the sidewalk and uh, led her into a dark area and he led her on foot to Quite a few different places where he abused her again. So, each Craig, time. so let me let me jump in real quick yeah. here. So, the yeah. timeline here is you had already taken the step forward to combat these things, and then this happens to your daughter out of the blue, and that's and that's yeah. why you sort of feel like this is a spiritual war because you took a step out in faith to go fight these things, and the the devil came in and said, "You guess what, Craig? You want to fight it? Yeah. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. I want to show you." Yeah. But but you turned it around. Yep. So uh, we got we got a phone call in the middle of the night. Our baby girl was pretty hysterical. She was screaming. She was on her way home. She had gotten away from him. And long story short, uh, she decided to fight back and prosecute him and work with law enforcement to do that. It took two and a half years for the soft judicial system here in Tucson, Arizona, to bring him to trial. During that time, my daughter was in counseling extensive counseling and therapy and she had told her counselor that she wanted to serve as a junior decoy agent in one of our operations and help put some of these predators away and my team and some of our investigators and my own wife told me that craig you should let aspen serve as a junior decoy agent and fight back and i'm like nope 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 nope, nope. my daughter's <laughs> yeah. not going anywhere near these bad people ever and finally aspen uh, she's you got to understand she's very hard uh, and there's a there's an aspect of our daughter that's God help anybody that messes with her. And so anyway, she looked <laughs> right through me as only she can and said, Papa, I'm going to do this with or without you. And I knew that she meant it. And uh, she's our daughter and my wife's Irish and Cherokee. And uh, here yeah. I am a Navy SEAL veteran. So she's Aspen, when she says something like that, she means it. And so I decided, okay, if you're going to do this, 
you either do this with your papa, right? Or within arm's reach of me so I can make sure that you're safe with my team, with my body armor, with, with me right there armed and ready to, oh. to go. In a, in a house full of SWAT team, and she's like, "Okay, then that's that's what I said, Papa." So basically, you're gonna you're gonna let me work with you. So we did, and uh, you see some of it in Contra Land. She worked in an operation where we ultimately arrested and convicted nine wow. child sex predators. So uh, it's, it's it was a beautiful beautiful effort, and I'm so grateful that she got to do it. And she let me know that it was more healing for her. And she thinks any therapy mm -hmm. could have ever been. And so I, I would want that for all victims to, to, to be able to have that experience to fight back and to stand there yes. two feet away from your, your predator that, that came to, to body snatch you and sell you in a cartel uh, sex trafficking ring, which one of them had come to do. You don't see him actually in Contra Land, but uh, to just know that you were part of taking them off the street so that they and putting them in a box to rape no more yes. 70 children each these predators on average are learned to have uh, or to destroy throughout their lifetimes it's a serial type of behavior they don't tend to stop so her seeing them go away and knowing that 70 children each is the average she got to see that she could be part of the solution and that was empowering for her Mm -hmm. And while others may not all be able to do that physically, they can draw their own power from watching her fight back. And so we're just really grateful. It's a, it was a unique opportunity for her to get in there and, and do that. And we're just, as a family, we're just in, just continually thankful for, for that, that blessing, that opportunity for her. So she's a scrappy little one. Ah. <laughs> well, Craig, you know, you mentioned that she was a part of nine different operations, uh, nine sting operations. And it looked like you were in several different locations in the country. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of video that just ended up on the cutting room floor. You just mentioned that there was one part of an individual that we didn't see. Uh, can we expect to see, like, a, a continuation, a follow-up uh, to this at some point? Do you see that on the horizon? Definitely. There's so, like 99% of it's on the cutting room floor. We've cut 100 terabytes of uh, 4K high-res footage and audio in five countries. And uh, wow. you, what you saw in Contraland was just a, a tiny snapshot of what we had done in that, that first three years. And now we've got a network of, of intelligence and law enforcement uh, allies mm -hmm. and, and partners all over God's green earth. And so there's there's a lot that we can do. Well, I want there's to talk to you. a major production we company going to do a series now. Oh, that's Sorry. great. A series we can expect. That's that's amazing. We do have to cut to a break, and I want to talk to you about the coordination with the different jurisdictions, how that functions yes. with your uh, with your organization, the municipalities, the ju you know, jurisdictional authority. How you coordinate with uh, with these different with these different teams because you guys are going in there with, you know, your team. You set it up, and then they go in, and then they make the arrests. Uh, and, and there were some key words I heard you say uh, as we were watching the film. As we were watching yeah. the film, like ah, okay, he he knows that you know they're setting up the bait, and the cops have to come in and take care of business. So I want to talk about that uh, as well as we got to talk about Epstein. We got to talk about Maxwell uh, and even Wayfair. That was really bizarre. Uh, what's happening there? And we got some images. We'll we'll try to present to you uh, as well on the flip side of this break. So stick around. You are listening to the G-Cast. I'm Gary Franchi with... Angie Franchi. And Craig the Sawman Sawyer. We'll be right back. We gotta pay a few bills over here, so sit tight. And the G-Cast will return in a few moments.
time to return to the G-Cast with your host, Gary Franchi. And and my co-host, my co-host, Angie Franchi. Thanks, babe. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> we'll get that fixed. I know. You're supposed to add me. <laughs> oh, I love you so much. I love you, too. It's uh, an inside joke now between yeah, us. Yeah, it really is. It is. Um, but what's not anything to joke about is the topic we're talking about today. Not and at all. Not just human sex trafficking, but child sex trafficking. And ever since... We okay, so you had the Epstein situation, right? Right. At first, I was what back in I think oh five or or oh six. He was initially arrested down there in Palm Beach, and then sort of given a slap on the wrist. And right. now, of course, he got hit again, and then he got um, he died. That was short lived. Yeah, he had a short lived <laughs> prison sentence. Uh, everyone likes to say that Epstein didn't kill himself. I I seem to think the same. But now we have his accomplice. Ghislaine Maxwell, I learned how to say her name, by the way, Ghislaine Maxwell, <laughs> she's in prison. Um, the odds are not good for her surviving to, to trial. Makes you wonder, of course. Um, but with, and our guest today, Craig the Sawman Sawyer, his film is called Contraland, and I want you guys to look it up on their website, uh, and that website again is ContralandMovie.com, his organization, Vets for Child Rescue. So, Craig... When you see what's happening in the headlines now, uh, you see what's happening with the media actually covering Epstein and Maxwell when before, years ago, they would just sort of sweep it under the rug. Does it give you any any level of hope for solving this global problem that we're seeing Epstein? Or is Epstein just the tip of the iceberg? Well, it does give me hope first. It, of course it does. And you're right, he is just the tip of the iceberg. Epstein was a, is an evil, he was an evil man. And he partook in, in these, these horrific activities with underage children, but he was more of an entertainer than a client, uh, it seems, because he catered to the global elite. So he would fly them on his own aircraft down to his island and to other locations where he would entertain them with underage sex and God only knows what other type of abuse because a lot of these people seem to get off on abusing the ch children and torturing or even murdering them as much as, as having the sex with them. So I, I'm hopeful. I was really, really stunned that they had put Jeffrey Epstein in a public facility like that and then lost him. My, I had a theory about what was really going on. If we were really smart, that we would have whisked him out of there and that he would be under protection somewhere and a black site would be exploiting all the evil intel that's in his head to map out his network. But now we've got Ghislaine Maxwell, which is uh, probably just about as good. And she's got all of his contact info and, and copies of all of his mm -hmm. child porn. And it seems like we should have the, the intel that we need now if we can exploit it properly through her to track down, investigate the entire network and take them all down eventually. So I celebrate that she's in custody. I just, uh, I question why she's not somewhere whisked off to a black site where nobody knows where she is except for those that absolutely need to know and uh, ensure, because she is a national asset, as evil as she is. And I, I don't think she should be treated well, but I think uh, in the intelligence community, you gotta realize, and even in law enforcement, you gotta realize that that information is a matter of national security. The level of corruption that she is tied to and the amount of information that, that she has in that evil head of hers and whatever hard drives she has access to are, are absolutely priceless for our national security. And everybody in that network needs to be absolutely followed through on with, with, with serious in-depth investigations and meaningful prosecutions on behalf of the citizens of the United States, anything short of that would be an absolute miscarriage of justice. Now, from what I understand, there was a connection to the intelligence communities, um, black blackmailing individuals using children and video and, and these types of things. 
Uh, you, I believe you ref, you refer to it as a brownstone operation, and that's the blackmailing done by intelligence communities. Is can you give it some yep. more detail on how are these connected? And then was was Epstein a, an agent to fulfill these types of operations so that they could get these politicians on the hook? Yeah, I don't know for a fact that he was. There's a lot of speculation and, and chatter that he was, and. Let's, let's say here's one scenario of a brownstoning operation outside of a mansion or something like Epstein was involved in. Let's say you've got a politician at a bar at a hotel in, in near D.C. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, some woman that comes in that's just drop-dead gorgeous, sits down next to him, starts smiling, and, uh, and, and they start the conversation. Next thing you know, he's only had one drink, but he feels like he can barely stand up. He's like totally out of his mind he's losing it she's saying hey i've got a i've got a room upstairs or i've got a room next door you want to just go relax and next thing you know he wakes up naked or maybe with a note or a polaroid on his chest of him right there but in the photograph there's a child and maybe the child is abused maybe the child is in chains maybe it's a very damning incriminating photograph of him having done god knows what with a a child and that is a is a classic snapshot example of, of how a brownstoning operation can be conducted. So now that politician would be compromised and he would have to do whatever his handlers tell him or the video or photos of him would be made public and ruin his career. So it's a lot of these people, they're so dedicated to their own career and their own paycheck that they would not say the heck it, heck with it. Um, you know, I'll tell I'll tell the truth. And push through this to try to con continue serving in good faith it's you know, so many people are so weak character that they uh or they're actual perverts and they've done the thing and they they like it and they just don't want to admit it so anyway one way or another that's how so many of our politicians are compromised and yeah there's a lot of intelligence communities uh, uh from different nations around the world that are involved in this because they all want that power and influence and intel so it's a it's a big ugly game, and uh, most of it we're not privy to as as typical citizens. I've learned a little bit from it uh, on it from the inside of the intelligence community, and you see who we've got on our board at Veterans for Child Rescue. We've got some pretty heavy hitters on our board, and uh, people that I've protected and worked with in different agencies over the years. So uh, it's it's something that's bad because we, the American citizens, are not getting what we're voting for. And we're not being told about the threat against our children because, again, a lot of these elites are in on it. There's a lot of top cover to protect people that are, you know, deemed too big to fail or too right. connected. And I'll say, uh, I'm not down with that. I think there needs to be Lady Justice needs to be truly blind, and we need to prosecute anybody. If you saw Contraland, you see we we prosecute anybody. We prosecuted federal agents. We have prosecuted elite pedophiles. We prosecuted illegal aliens and uh, church officials i mean whoever came for children if, if they demonstrated enough factual evidence to put them away we put them away and they so were that's exposed the way our yes yes can, can i ask yeah. you i want to ask a question i want to ask a question regarding um the locations you selected okay so there were several locations right and uh I'm thinking to myself, what better location to pull a sting operation than Washington, D.C.? Or what about Hollywood, right there in the middle of Los Angeles? Uh, have you considered going into those locations? And I'm sure, you know, with, with the connections that, that a lot of those elite individuals have, they're going to say, no, no, Craig, uh, nah, we, we don't need your kind come around here. Not the saw man. Yeah, we don't want the saw <laughs> man. They're going to be afraid of you. How does that work? Yeah, we don't talk about we don't talk about future operations for OPSEC purposes. We of talk course. about some of the operations that we have and the detail that we're able to share without causing harm to our operations. Okay, so, so we so, want you to go go to Hollywood, go to DC, and take them all down uh, because it's it, that's what that's the epicenter of evil, in my opinion. Yes, I agree. I agree. It needs to happen, and that's all I'm going to say uh, about that. <laughs> That's all and I'm going to say. Helpful. Yeah. The, what, so really the key is the district attorney and, and the, just, uh, the DA's prosecuting attorneys. If they are willing to prosecute child sex crimes, then we could do a lot of good. And if they're not, 
that they're corrupt. And that's why people like George Soros or everybody's talking about how he buys uh, yep. crooked DAs, sheriffs and judges and, and prosecutors because uh, they they don't, you know, it, it, I'll say this. If, you, if you've got a judge that is in a DA that's not prosecuting child sex crimes in your area, as rampant as child trafficking is and pedophilia is, you've got a corruption problem. And that's a huge issue. You can't solve criminal problems if the the system is corrupted so we've got to kind of clean out and and re-legitimize our judicial system our law enforcement system so that it works for we the people and and can get the, the crooks off the street and make meaningful prosecutions and set an example so right now it's been compromised in a lot of areas at a lot of levels so that's part of the problem too i mean it's not it's like Man, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite, bite at a time. Not that I'm about eating elephants. I love elephants <laughs> personally. But, uh, it's just a metaphor, but you understand what I'm saying. Yes. It's, there's a lot of corruption, but we have to get at it. We have to begin dismantling the corruption and rebuilding with the legitimacy. We, we, we want that as citizens. So we have to fight for it. It's not going to fix itself. Grateful for your passion and your drive and your dedication to this. It is inspiring. It is absolutely inspiring. And I'm just, I'm so touched. <laughs> I mean, I remember prior to this interview, I was texting my husband and our producer and I was laying in bed and I just couldn't get to sleep because this child trafficking was heavily on my mind and it has been for a while. And, that and I don't even know like why all of a sudden you just, it just came out of the blue. You're like, Hey, this is what I want to do a show about. It's been on my mind for quite some time. And really I had no direction and I felt helpless. And it's it's just such a blessing and well, a godsend that Craig is here with us. Well, I mean, John John Willis connected mm -hmm. me right. with with Craig, and um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are fighting this, and we could have talked to a lot of people. But you're doing something mm -hmm. about it, and you're giving people hope, and you're giving mm -hmm. the victims hope, and you're giving them back the power. We well, have to. It's the privilege. It's an ugly business to be a part of, but it's a privilege. My wife and I go to sleep at night, sleeping better than we ever have, even with all the nasty bitterness. And on the other side, you can't do anything good, right? Without evil biting back and trying to uh, destroy what you're doing, destroy your good name and so forth. But we sleep better knowing that we're doing good. the right thing. We feel more spiritually connected and, and like sure of our faith than we ever have, because this thing, we've seen so many fantastic things happen Heck, in the last 48 hours, there have been two girls recovered from uh, groups that we've been working with and the family that I was uh, working with. It just seemingly like that. It's just like Amen. we hate, Amen. you know, get phone calls. Craig, we got her back. I'm like, yes, yes. Amen. You so did it. It's, it's good. And I, I don't want to be the only one out there fighting. I'm not the only one out there fighting. But I don't want people to look and say, so, man, you fixed this. I want to inspire everybody to rise up. That's why. You know, nothing is better and more powerful than recruiting 320 million Americans to stand up for themselves, stand up for all of the children, because we can be a, a tidal wave of positive correction for the children if we will each stand up and do a little something. So, man, yes. uh, I just want to encourage everybody. You do have the power to stand up and be heard and, and make a difference. And so we urge you and invite you to do it. There's a lot of empowering tools on vetsforchildrescue.org. Our website that'll help you get involved, write letters to your congressman and say, look, we demand stronger enforcement for our children. That's what we want. If you want to do it, we'll vote you out, put someone else in who will. I want to get we into that. that power for our citizens. Every one of us do. In the next segment, I want to get in deeper into those solutions uh, so that we can leave everybody with some, some something tangible to take away from this podcast, something that they can walk away with, not just to go watch a film, but to actually take... Uh, take steps yes. to support these organizations, support these types of actions in their own community. Uh, we didn't get to the Wayfair thing, but we do need to. We do need to cover that. We'd be derelict if we didn't, uh, because it's very. I think it's very important uh, to discuss those those weird things people have been seeing online, uh, and of course with the jurisdictional authority and, and how you work with these organizations, uh, different municipalities. So we've got a lot more to cover when we come back. The next break. Um, after the next break, about a 20-minute segment, and we will uh, give you guys the tools from Craig the Sawman Sawyer. New film is called Contraland. You can find it at the website ContraLandMovie.com. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Angie, 
and Craig the Sawman Sawyer on the GCast. We'll be right back. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Gary Franchi will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Cast. Welcome back to the GCast. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Angie Franchi. Yes, you are. <sighs> oh, and you're Gary Franchi. Yeah, don't leave me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, babe. Uh, I love you too. Oh my goodness, so much to cover here. Mm -hmm. What about this Wayfair? Um, Everyone's talking about this. I, I still, I'm like, I'm. You know, I'm not catching on what's happening here. Well, usually when things like that start to surface and start to bubble up online, I always kind of take a couple steps back because I don't know what the heck it is. I don't know what it means. It sounds too crazy. It sounds right? too crazy. But given the topic that we're talking about, and you know, we got to talk about it. Our our guest Craig the Sawman Sawyer with his new film Contraland, nothing is off limits at this point, in my opinion. And so I guess what's happening at Wayfair allegedly. Like, okay, here's, I guess this is a posting of something at Wayfair, a product. It looks like, what is it, a cactus or something? Two piece cactus wall decor for $100,000. And the the SKU numbers are the same as the SKU number that apparently is connected to these these children. And I think we've got another picture here coming. Let's, let's take a look at the next picture. Okay, so here's another one. This is a, you can see the name of the, of the style of cabinet is the same name as the as the child who went missing. Now I don't know if these are doctored images. Someone could have easily taken a photograph and they could say, oh, they could change the headline, they could use Photoshop. Sure. Anything could be done on Photoshop. But what the reality is, okay, is, is this really a, a listing for Wayfair? Could they be this out could in they open be and out in the open like this? I mean, when I was doing my initial talk about this, and you can bring the look at okay, so we have these pillows. I it's hard for Another me to see. Another example it. here. Yeah, like six seven thousand dollar pillows or something like that so in talking with some of my friends and people who who have followed these types of topics you can bring these pictures down brian oh uh, there's another one okay yeah look at a, a, a photograph of a girl and a pillow a ten thousand dollar pillow okay 
Where did these come from? Someone said to me that there was a um, a mechanism for using and and to to traffic children or even what is it uh, like uh, body parts, you know, uh, organs, organ harvesting <sighs> that they would put fake ads on eBay. And that's how they would be able to transfer the funds and they would have these communications, but they would just have no, no actual, you know, widget would be purchased, but they would use that as the mechanism. So maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe Wayfair has somehow fallen into this thing. And there's pictures of the person who runs Wayfair with Epstein. Oh, that is, that's disturbing. Okay, so it's not that far-fetched. And since we're, we have an expert with us today, Craig the Sawman Sawyer, uh, film contralandmovie.com Craig when you saw this Wayfair stuff come out and you understand the mechanisms of child trafficking and using online systems to do so uh, what were your initial thoughts my initial thoughts were that it was very concerning the it, imagine the likelihood of them naming a cabinet uh, some exotic name of a, of a missing child within that proximity of the child going missing and the exorbitant pricing on the, the cabinets and the pillows and the other products did cause me concern. And I thought, okay, this needs to be, there's enough in the, the responses, the, the reviews of the customers prior to, prior to this blowing up and, and getting so much public attention. If you go back and you read the reviews from months ago, they do paint a very concerning picture. So at the very least, it needs to be uh, the point of a serious, in-depth federal criminal investigation to see what is going on with it. It looks like, at the minimum, uh, money laundry. A lot of these organized crime syndicates launder money in, in that way or similar ways. So it, it fits in with that. I would say that's probably at least money laundering. But... We can never get too hyped up in these things. Whenever there's a lot of hype, I say take caution because it, people play a lot of games online and they like to get attention and, and blow stories up. And so I say a more careful and needed mm -hmm. approach is is the better long game play. Dig into it, investigate anything that's sketchy, learn about what's going on. And then once, once all the facts are understood, then the, the law enforcement officials can make an informed, intelligent decision on, on what what it really is based on the totality of circumstances. And I'm talking about not like just what you can see online, but investigating the owners and the people involved and the the companies that are selling the cabinets and, and what all is behind it. They'll they'll be able to get down to the bottom of it if they do a, a legitimate thorough investigation. But I think it's something like that that the, the public's been so curious about need to be made public. The results of an investigation and any prosecutions need to be made public so that we can understand. And so what I get so excited about when I see a situation like this with all of the citizens alerting each other to it, saying, hey, look at this, look at this, is not the hype around it. But what I celebrate is the awareness, the alert. Because just a year ago, guys, cool. it wasn't like this. The American populace was not this aware yet. And so Contraland had only been out for maybe six weeks, eight weeks now. And already people are, are looking and they're looking out for the kids and going, hey, is this something? And they're telling everybody, hey, look at this. They're dogging this. And I, I just celebrate that, that elevation and awareness. And as long as we're metered and careful, with it and don't spin off on theories and, and start trying to overextend ourselves in something that would allow us to be discredited, then I think it's nothing but good. That's what I want, a non-permissive environment for child trafficking so that if they are money laundering and they're selling children through these types of online mechanisms, people will see it and dog them and demand investigations and hound them and they, they can no longer get away with it. So I celebrate it. Mm -hmm. I just say be very careful and stay grounded on factual information, factual evidence as you march forward. And if you're you're uh, precise like that and you're accurate, it can be uh, the results can be nothing but good. I want to pull up a couple quick headlines here, Brian. If you could bring up the NDI, uh, you can see here uh, this is, this is the response. What Wayfair denies internet rumors of child trafficking uh, and CEO resignation. Uh, that's from Boston.com. Market Watch says it's a crackpot basis 
uh, conspiracy theory. Daily Voice says uh, viral conspiracy claims completely unfounded. And of course, if you go on over to Snopes, uh, they will tell you that this is completely false. But if you ever look into the people who run Snopes, <laughs> they're pretty questionable themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but but you're looking at it from a, from a perspective that this is great that we have we have this um, crowdsourced truth network people reaching out demanding action alert. and and that's that's the best part of this mm -hmm. is that whether we can find truth to this reality or not the point is is that people are aware and the virality is giving everyone the tools to to combat this and let's talk about some totally of those tools agree. now um angie what do you have some <sighs> yeah, questions we, here you know gary and i we have three small children um and as I'm watching your film, it, it's just reiterating things I know I should be doing and things I shouldn't be doing. But, you know, our kid, our, our oldest plays video games. Um, how do we protect our children? Especially, yeah. well, on, especially gotta, online. Yeah. A lot of the kids that are on apps, either on their phone, playing, uh, you know, sending videos back and forth with other kids, they think they're other kids or on their xboxes or any any intelligent device that's connected to the internet they got to realize that there are adult predators out there stalking them and pretending to be other children so it should be very disturbing to you if your child is chatting with with someone online you're like who is that yeah. boy that, you know, that you're playing with and he's like oh that's just wilbur you know and where did you meet does wilbur go to school with you oh no but i just met him on here you know a few weeks ago we're good friends I'm like no uh, you don't know who Wilbur is. Wilbur may be a hairy 50-year-old predator that's that's probably geolocating you through some other app and maybe sitting around the corner in a creepy rape van ready to bonk you in the head and take you to God knows where Ugh. when the next time you walk off the corner of the playground or, or whatever. Or if he tells you, hey, meet me at the 7-Eleven around the corner. I, I've got free video games. You want to you swap some or something like that? I mean, the children just have to understand that that full-grown predatory adults stalk them through these apps on their phone and through gaming portals and things like that. So they need to just be aware. So you got to get in through their contacts list. You have to know who your children are communicating with online because not only can they locate where your child is on the face of planet Earth, but which house that they're in and even which room of the house. Some of these geolocator apps go to that level of detail. So um it's not okay that the children don't know because they're too vulnerable in that level of ignorance so i look folks i don't want to max out their their fear to where it steals their joy right we don't want our children that's so a great paranoid point it's, it steals their joy but we don't want them all the way down at the bottom of the level of awareness right. where they're completely oblivious like little bunny foo foo hopping down the forest and getting bonked over the head and thrown into the big bad wolf's lair right somewhere in the middle is yeah. an optimal level of awareness so that they're okay so that they know not to, to do things that put them in danger but they're still happy and enjoy their innocence of childhood i don't know exactly yeah. where that level is for each family it's a personal decision but as long as we're seeking it i, I think we're better off absolutely we are better off with with the knowledge to to protect them um society is grooming our children right how do how are they grooming them in schools or preying on them it's relentless the history books have been rewritten they're not teaching our children about big government models that have that have resulted in, in tyranny and even genocide over the last hundred years and they're not teaching them about a lot of other things too what they are teaching them instead is how to be easy victims for adult predators and they're teaching them, they're forcing upon them all manner of education on different perversions that they may have never learned about, even in their adulthood. They're forcing them now to teach uh, even toddlers all different manners of masturbation and all kinds of perversion that are, quite frankly, disturbing to normal, healthy children who are not wired that way. Why are they forcing these perversions and these dark thoughts on these children? But because it it initiates them, it it perverts them, it taints them and causes them to start thinking about it. It sexualizes them long before they would have normally been 
sexualized and, and it causes them to be more vulnerable to adult predators. We have to understand the game. We have to understand the evil behind this and safeguard the children and fight back and even start prosecuting those who are forcing these, these diabolical uh, perversions upon our, our school children. It's no longer to just say, well, we're not going to teach them that level of perversion. You know, we'll only give you half of what you want and draw the line. We need to stop playing defense. We need to start playing offense and going after these people and start investigating and prosecuting them and say, what, what kind of diabolical program are you on? Why are you trying to initiate and, and, uh, and subjugate and, 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 and render vulnerable our children? Why are you trying to victimize our, my children? And I think we need to start going after and, and investigating and prosecuting these people that are forcing this on us. It's been a one-way street probably in my entire lifetime. It's been a slow march to get rid of prayer in schools, to get rid of the Pledge of Allegiance, to get rid of things that united us and caused us to be proud of our country and take care of each other. It's a systematic uh, ideological subversion campaign that Yuri Bezmenov, the KG, Russian KGB agent, defector that came here the United States warned us about Joe McCarthy warned us about it um, G Edward Griffin has warned us about it mm. it's known it, there's, it's all part of the same dark uh, global Marxist march to shatter our nation by targeting our culture and uh, our morality is one of the things of our culture that made us strong and united us so it is under deliberate systematic attack and so these kinds of dark things and forcing these perversions and all these these types of education on small children that that don't make any sense it's all because part of the same agenda they've written about it it's um it's all it's all public documented uh, factual evidence of what their the agenda that they're carrying so we would be wise and empowered by reading our enemy's playbook and understanding their objectives so that we can stop them because we can't if we're unwitting to it. Craig, you, um, I'm glad you met. You brought up uh, G. Edward Griffin. He's uh, quite an influential character, influential in my life, and um, I'm glad to say that I know him personally. Uh, but I'm just glad oh, wow. you, you brought That's him cool. up. Yeah, um, yeah. I've been to his house and gone out to dinner with him and hung out with him. Great guy, excellent guy. Um, but talking about foundations let's we've got about five minutes left in this segment before we have to go uh and i know this this conversation is going to continue it's going to continue online it's going to continue in the comment section below this video as people share this around as well um and we love to have you back to go deeper into this topic again but let's talk about some of the foundations that you work with uh the other foundations who are all acting in different capacities in this fight and, and some of those organizations and the roles they play, the puzzle piece that they fit into. Yeah, look, the, the crooks are organized. Mm. And so I, I'm a team player. I say shame on us if we don't organize. So I'm leading from the front on that. So I've assembled a coalition of NGO mm. organizations of really quality people to uh, address different aspects of child trafficking. One is sold no more. And they focus on education and prevention. So we've partnered with them because they handle that fantastically. And we've partnered uh, SWAT Ministries International who train the surviving victims and they also train the NGO volunteers who go and conduct rescues on child sex trafficking victims. There's also a partner of ours that is um, Soul Survivor Inc. who remove the branding and tattoos that the traffickers and the pimps put on their boys and girls to mark them as literally their property for trafficking. And then there's Rancho Milagro who provide healing to the survivors of any sort of trauma through equine therapy, very beautiful healing program that they have. So together with Vets for Child Rescue, we handle the alert piece, alert the populace to the threat and hammer the predators and take them off the streets and help with the recoveries. Then Together, we, we have a pretty wide scope of the problem that we all address, and we mutually support each other, and uh, I think it's a beautiful thing, and I invite and encourage others to do the same, because united we stand, folks. Divided we fall. We are, our country is under attack. Our children are under systematic attack, so let us unite and rally around our children. 
We will be glad we did. We have to. We have to. Craig, before we go, because we're, we're, we're running out the clock now, we've got about three minutes left, and I want to ask if there's one thing that people can take away, an actionable piece of information, uh, something practical they could do, uh, I mean, obviously being aware of the situation, being aware of the problem is the first step, but what is something practical people can do? Uh, I mean, obviously sharing your film and, and, and working with these organizations or going to the websites, but what are some things people can do in their daily life, you think, if there is anything, to be yeah. hyper aware? Yeah, there are many things. I, I teach people in my hard target training course to just do a simple scan visually whenever you walk in to a new space. You walk out doors from a building, you walk into a, a, a hallway, you walk into a room, just do a scan left to right visually to let yourself know uh, what's in there. And your subconscious will pick up on the fact that if somebody's got bad intentions and they look a little sketchy, you could, and that leads to situational awareness so that you can help uh, safeguard you and your children from, from these things. Teach your children to do the same so they're not such easy victims. Take your children's phones and put them in your master bedroom at nighttime for charging. Don't leave it in the children's bedrooms because a lot of times that's where they, they get into trouble. Uh, you can write your elected officials and, and demand stronger enforcement for the children, stronger protection. We've got a drop down menu on how to find your elected officials in a, in a form letter on our website, Vets for Child Rescue, to make it easy for you to do that. And uh, our elected officials work for us. We have to tell them what we want. We have to leverage them to do what we want or we'll swat them out of the way and put in someone else who will. And our founding fathers wanted us to run this country, but we have to assert ourselves in order to run it. If we just sit back and say, we don't like politics like I have most of my life, uh, then, then they run it and they do whatever they want. And then we end up with a situation where we've got a, an epidemic, the fastest growing criminal enterprise on earth, 38 to $50 billion a year, hunting our children in our own homeland and without us knowing. So that won't do. So we, the way we, we bring law enforcement support and prosecution is through our elected officials. And we have to force them to represent us mm -hmm. uh, in a better, stronger way. And uh, writing them and calling them is how we bring that about. Angie, do you have any final thoughts Absolutely. or any questions, anything, any points that we want to hit before we go? I urge all parents to watch this. I urge everyone who tuned in tonight to share it. Um, share it with everyone you know. There are, there's so much information here that we can use to empower ourselves, to continue to be inspired by the work that you and your team are doing. And I pray to God to keep your family safe. And I thank you for everything you're doing. And I hope you know that Gary and I are here to fight with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Craig, um, do, well, you have any, do you have any final thoughts before we go? Look, you're united we stand. I say, you know, the, this is, this is um, it's a depressing topic, but look at the good that can happen when, when strong people who stand up and say no more take action. So I say be encouraged. Yes, it's dark, it's ugly, but greater are we when we stand united and we say no more you would be absolutely staggered at the positive effect that can happen uh criminals are bullies and and they're cowards and uh we we can't put them on the run and we can change this and we must do it and by by seeking strength in numbers and unity is the, that's the way forward that's the way that we do this so i want everybody encouraged to realize that we can absolutely eradicate this even as big as it is because we haven't been doing anything about it so let's show up on the playing field let's show up in numbers with determination with righteous conviction and say yes. no more this ends now this this is this is the last generation that you destroy yes. this ends now and we can do that so let's take let's take courage and encouragement from it and knowing that we are the ones now is the time when this is meant to happen so let's celebrate that and let's own it amen to let's that Craig, it's been an absolute honor and an absolute privilege to have you as our guest today. And we want everyone who's watching right now to go to your website, ContraLandMovie.com, and watch the film. And we want you to share this podcast with your friends and your family. Uh, so you can, get, after you watch the documentary, of course, this our podcast here, 
episode 23 will help give some deeper insight into some of the behind the scenes things going on and the continuation of the fight against child uh child trafficking uh, but it's like okay everyone subscribe like comment it's like it feels like so petty when you think about the the gravity of the conversation but uh but this really, is how we can get the message out yeah get inspired pass this along mm -hmm. share share the film mm -hmm. this is how you get involved this is how you can go to bed at night feeling like you've done something yeah important we got to protect the little ones we have to that's that's our job that is our mission is to protect the little ones and craig is out there like literally on the front lines doing it i mean he is doing it he is he is grabbing those scumbags you know moments before they think that they're going to be with a child and um god bless him god protect him yes. god keep him and his family safe i thought what was interesting angie was when he was talking about the spiritual side of it and that when he at the very beginning of the podcast when i asked him i said you know back up a second so you first made the commitment to go after these people and then out of nowhere your daughter becomes a victim I couldn't believe that that out that 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 was a direct assault. That was a direct assault from the darkness itself. Yes. But so, they took back that power. She is a victim God no bless. more. God and they are a dynamic duel. They are a dynamic family. God wow. bless them. God bless them. Folks, uh, we're going to close out the show. Please make sure uh, you share this with your friends and family. Go to the website, ContraLandMovie.com. Uh, support the efforts of these organizations, Sold No More, Swap Ministries, Soul Survivor Inc., Rancho Milagro, and of course, um, Veterans for Child Rescue. Yes. Oh, wow, we could keep going on this, man, but we, we hit a lot of ground today. Folks, we did. I feel inspired. I, I, I truly feel inspired, and, and I have hope. Mm -hmm. And I do believe we can end this, this generation. It doesn't have to continue. We're going to. And it's it's people like uh, Craig Sawyer who are doing it. Mm-hmm. And he's not alone, though. That's the best of beautiful thing. We're in this together. We're all in this together, friends. Let's keep fighting. All right, folks. We'll see you at the next see podcast everybody next, next time. Week, well, seven days from now, God willing. <laughs> and uh, we'll have another guest or we'll have some more news and we'll just keep on keeping on here. Absolutely. Thanks for joining so, us, everybody. Until then, my friends, stay gold. That's all we've got for you right now. Gary's got to run. We thank you for tuning into our podcast. If you're hungry for more, head on over to Gary's Next News Network YouTube channel for the latest news and commentary on current events. Until next time, stay gold.